The creatures of our past have long left us wondering how it would feel to be so close up to a T-Rex or being able to witness the beautiful flight of a Pteranodon. Well, as we know from our last video, the world of cryptozoology opens up claims that these creatures may not be so long gone as we think. Welcome again to the Prehistoric Cryptid series, where we'll be covering accounts of living prehistoric creatures seen by us. Let's get straight into it now with the first entry of Tier 1, South American Dinosaurs. South American dinosaurs, ranging from massive sauropods to theropods and mysterious pterosaurs, are said to have the possibility of prehistoric survival in the modern era. A significant figure in this context is the British archaeologist and explorer Percy Fawcett, known for his daring expeditions into the South American jungles. Despite facing numerous dangers including hostile terrain and wildlife, Fawcett was driven by tales and manuscripts he encountered early in his explorations in South America, which led him to believe in the existence of a lost city filled with gold, which he dubbed Z. His explorations also led him to believe in the presence of prehistoric creatures living in the area, drawing on reports and his own experiences, such as citing what he believed could be a Diplodocus in the Beni Swamps of Madre de Dios. Fawcett's tales of encountering inexplicable tracks and creatures fueled speculation and interest in these cryptids. Fawcett's most famous expedition occurred in 1925 though, when he, along with his son Jack and friend Rayleigh Rimmel, ventured into unknown territories in Brazil in search of Z. After their initial communication, they mysteriously disappeared, sparking numerous theories and search missions to uncover their fate. Despite various efforts, their end still remains a mystery, with people saying they might have met fatal encounters with indigenous tribes or just succumbed to the jungle's harshness. The fascination with South American dinosaurs is not just isolated to Fawcett's adventures though. Other reports and discussions continue to add to the stories of these cryptids, with enthusiasts and researchers debating their existence and sharing findings. Barhai The Barhai is a cryptid reported from the dense forest rivers of Liberia, mostly within the expanses of Lofa County and along the secluded stretches of the Kahai River. This mysterious creature has sparked interest and fear among the local people, who describe it as a great amphibious reptile that shares features of both crocodiles and monster lizards, which kind of reminds you of the Postosuchus of prehistoric times, which was an apex predator. And its legend has had such an impact on local culture that adventurers and researchers from around the globe have been interested in whether this creature is actually out there. John Mark Shepard, an American aid worker and missionary, was among the first to bring widespread attention to the Barhai, compiling first-hand accounts from the locals who revered and feared this beast in equal measure. These accounts were forwarded to well-known cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman in December 2007, shedding light on a creature that, until then, had remained largely obscured from the broader cryptozoology discourse. The locals' testimonies painted a picture of a creature that, despite its monstrous reputation, was just part of their everyday reality. Remarkably, some fishermen even claimed that they had managed to catch and kill Barhai. According to these accounts, the fishermen would entangle the massive reptile in nets before hitting them with shotgun blasts. The meat of the Barhai, it was said, would then find its way into local markets, where it was sold as a rare delicacy. In 2016, the Barhai's mystery deepened even further when cinematographer Paul Mungam embarked on a journey to Lofa County for his program Expedition Mungo. His investigation revealed a community living in the shadow of the Barhai, where even seasoned fishermen dared not to venture into certain tributaries of the Kahai River, fearing an encounter with this apex predator. And Mungim even confirmed that the locals didn't add any supernatural qualities to the Barhai, viewing it instead as an actual natural inhabitant of their environment. Eyewitness accounts of the Barhai are both fascinating and horrifying too. Some tell of narrow escapes from this riverine terror, while others recount tragic tales of lives lost to its appetite which includes humans as prey. It's said to drag its victims underwater, drowning them before dragging their carcasses to the riverbank to feast. South Carolina Thunderbird In South Carolina, there have been several interesting reports of a cryptid known as the Thunderbird, a creature that resembles descriptions more of pterosaurs 
than any bird known to modern science. The legend of the Thunderbird originates from Native American folklore, mostly among the Santee people of South Carolina. These narratives describe the Thunderbird as a powerful and mysterious creature, often associated with thunderstorms and regarded as a carrier of immense power. Such descriptions have endured through generations too, suggesting that the Thunderbird isn't just something of imagination, but a creature that has been observed across different epochs. One of the most notable Marn sightings occurred in the summer of 2004, when a couple driving towards Myrtle Beach reported hearing loud, unusual flapping sounds, like a large fabric being violently whipped by the wind. Their encounter escalated when they observed a large pterodactyl-like creature pursuing their car, leaving a weird snotty residue on the vehicle's window. This creature was described as having white skin, which typical birds or bats don't really have. Another incident from 2013, a report surfaced detailing an encounter with a similar creature that leather-like wings and eyes of an almost orange-reddish hue. This sighting, along with others, has been consistent in describing the creature's great wingspan and its terrifying swooping approach towards witnesses. Going back even further though, a 1989 sighting by Susan Wooden between Greenville and Florence, South Carolina, described the Thunderbird as having a wingspan of 12 to 15 feet, leathery wings, a distinct head appendage, and a long tail that set it apart from any known bird species. This encounter took place in broad daylight too, which lended some more credibility to the detailed physical attributes reported. Solomon Islands Dragon Snake In the Solomon Islands, the dragon snake is a cryptid which locals say looks like a dragon or a living dinosaur and has been the center of numerous stories, mostly because of its aggressive behavior towards humans. One night, a fisherman had a close encounter that he'd never forget. While out on the water in his small fiberglass boat at 3am, he saw the dragon snake flying nearby. Curious, he shone his torch at it, which seemed to provoke the creature. It flew straight at him and hovered above his boat. Panicked, the man tried to escape, steering his boat back to the shore, with the dragon snake following closely. During this chase, the creature attacked, firing something like a ball of light at him, which partly missed but still scorched the inside of his boat. Once on shore, the fisherman ran into the bushes, but the dragon snake still pursued him, even mimicking his movements around a tree. In a moment of desperation, the man prayed for safety, and remarkably, the dragon snake left. Shaken, he made his way back to the village and later needed medical treatment. Marius Borion, a former engineer, shared another chilling account too. Living in Cape Esperance, he and his friends were night fishing when one of them spotted the dragon snake. It shone brightly like a star about 60 feet across. After a while, it dived into the water and then resurfaced, glowing even more intensely before flying over the trees. Over 7 months, Borean claimed to have seen the creature around 60 times, which is pretty insane. With its described ability to glow and spit fireballs, it's unlike any known animal we know, linked to a lot of speculation of what it really could be. Our answer here too, Giant Anaconda For over a century, explorers and natives in the Amazon have reported sightings of giant anacondas far surpassing the size of the largest known living snakes. These reports include snakes measuring from 50 to 150 feet long, with some claims of weights as extreme as 5 tons. Among the most notable accounts is that of British explorer Percy Fawcett, who we mentioned earlier, when in the early 20th century he claimed to have killed a 62-foot anaconda, a story that was met with skepticism at first, but later supported by cryptozoologist Bernard Huvelmans. Fawcett's encounter took place not far from the confluence of the Tigor and Rio Negro rivers. He described shooting a giant anaconda with a .44 caliber rifle as it made its way up the bank causing a significant disturbance in the water and against the boat. This account stands as one of the most detailed descriptions of an encounter with a giant anaconda, if it actually happened. The possibility of these giant anacondas is partly supported by the existence of slide marks left by these snakes. These marks, found in remote areas, are said to be 6 feet wide, suggesting the presence of snakes much larger than any currently documented. The anaconda's largely aquatic lifestyle and the dense, unexplored nature of the Amazon rainforest further fuel speculations about their existence and whether these places could actually harbor them. The discovery of Titanoboa, a prehistoric snake that lived approximately 60 million years ago, 
and could grow up, up to 42 feet long, also add some credibility to large snakes being alive. However, the Titanoboa is known to be long extinct and no modern evidence has conclusively proven the existence of anacondas of similar size. And plus, back then the humidity and the environment was much different, so it does pose a lot of different questions. While some mainstream scientists acknowledge the potential for anacondas to reach lengths of up to 45 feet, the discovery of 6 foot wide slide marks has led others to wonder about snakes reaching up to 60 feet long. The search of these colossal serpents continues though, with the hope that one day, evidence of their existence will be conclusively documented, which could unravel one of Amazon's greatest mysteries, and it would be really scary knowing that something like that is out there. Velichko's Hairy Monitor The Hairy Monitor is a cryptid that originates from the heart of Mali, Africa. According to reports, this creature has been known to a local Bambara people, with its existence coming to light through the observations of Russian agricultural scientist Evgeny Velichko. Working in Mali for UNESCO, Velichko encountered tales of the Hairy Monitor from the Bambara people living around Katiabogo, but it wasn't until a personal experience in 1966 that he became a direct witness to this mysterious animal. While driving from Katibogo to Bambako, Velichko's attention was caught by an unusual sight, a large monster lizard-like creature emerging from a ravine. This wasn't just any ordinary lizard though, it had a size of about 2 meters and was covered in chocolate brown hair with a woolly texture, about 1.5 inches long. It was even said to have a long and bushy tail like a fox's, which makes it not like any known species of Marner lizard. The animal's appearance was so distinct that Velichko, despite not being an expert in African fauna, felt compelled to share his setting with Vogrug Seveta magazine, hoping for some clarification or identification from readers more familiar with the wildlife of Africa. This account has fueled speculation in the cryptozoological community, with some Russian cryptozoologists wondering the possibility of the hairy monitor being a living fossil or a prehistoric remnant. They suggest it could be a descendant of the Permian non-mammalian therapsids, which are ancient reptiles that predated dinosaurs. This theory aligns with the creature's unique features, which don't match those of any current African wildlife or known prehistoric reptiles, presenting a pretty weird puzzle that defies easy categorization or explanation. Warline the war lion, also known as the jungle walrus, is a river monster that has had many sightings across various countries in Central Africa. From Angola to Mali and from the Central African Republic to Kenya, this creature has been described under different names but still shares a common, fearsome reputation across the stretches of tropical rivers it's said to inhabit. Known by its semi-aquatic nature, the war lion is often seen as a hairy beast with prominent tusks or fangs which you'd probably guess but resembles Smilodon a lot. Even though its size isn't too great though, it's said to attack and kill hippos, asserting its dominance over territories. Some accounts even suggest the creature might have scales, attributed perhaps to the sheen of wet fur rather than actual reptilian skin. One of the most chilling accounts of the war line is its alleged man-eating behavior. Among the various types of war lines, the Murunugu of the Central African Republic and Chad stands out because of the frequency and detail of its sayings. Described as leopard shaped with striped or dappled fur, long fangs, and a savage appetite for human flesh, this creature has been a source of a lot of terror for locals. The recorded encounters with war lions span decades too, with notable incidents including a 1911 attack where a Moronugu allegedly killed a French soldier. Despite the lack of concrete evidence though, the persistence of reports and the specific descriptions then a certain credibility to the existence of something unexplained within these rivers. The evidence for the war line primarily consists of eyewitness accounts too, unusual wounds found on hippos, and ancient cave paintings that seem to depict the creature. While no physical remains have been conclusively linked to the cryptid, the consistent reports across time and geography still keep the mystery alive. Ngubu In the savannas of Cameroon, the Ngubu is described as having six horns and hooves, and it reportedly competes with elephants for territory, despite its smaller size, similar to an ox. This description has led some to speculate that the Nungubu might be a surviving Ceratopsian, a group of horned dinosaurs that lived millions of years ago. The story of the Ngubu came to broad attention in November 2000, 
when William Gibbons and David Wetzel conducted preliminary research in Cameroon. They're investigating another cryptid, the Mokele Mbembe, which you probably all know, when they heard about the Ngubu from a group of pygmies. These locals distinguish the creature from the ordinary rhinoceros, describing its multiple horns and stating that an elder in the community had killed one with a spear years ago. They also mentioned that sightings of the Ngubu had become rare, suggesting a decline in its population. While some think it might just be a misidentified or exaggerated rhino, the detailed descriptions of its horns and behavior doesn't entirely fit that of any known species of rhinoceros. Our answer tier 3, Beast of Sherman In the 1960s, a young boy and his family in Sherman, New York, claimed to have encounters with two mysterious creatures that would be hard to believe if not for the details they shared. These incidents mainly came to light through a letter mentioned by John Keel, a well-known figure in the study of paranormal phenomena, in one of his books. The letter, written in 1970 by then 15-year-old, delves into experiences his family had with these strange beings on their property adjacent to the swamp. The creatures described were unlike anything typically found in forests of New York. They were massive, with bodies cloaked in white fur, and possessed physical characteristics reminiscent of ancient creatures long thought extinct. These beings, according to the letter, could navigate the environment on both two and four legs and they exhibited sizes that ranged dramatically, from 12 to an impressive 18 feet in length, with tails extending another 6 to 8 feet. Such dimensions caused them to be among the largest cryptids ever reported in North American folklore. What makes the account from Sherman really interesting though is the detailed observations provided over an extended period. The creatures weren't fleeting visions or shadows in the night, they were substantial and reoccurring, observed by multiple members of the family and, according to the letter, at least two other residents of the area. This ongoing interaction with the cryptids offers a depth of narrative not really found in similar cryptid stories, where singular, often ambiguous encounters are the norm. These encounters in Sherman also of course raise questions about the nature and origin of the creatures. The comparison to the Mapinguari of South America and the prehistoric sloth hints at a possibility that remnants of ancient species might still roam secluded parts of the world, including the less explored regions of New York. Makara The Makara is a creature from Hindu mythology that's caught the attention of people for centuries, especially because of its unique depiction art and carvings found in old temples across India, Cambodia, and Vietnam. This creature is often shown as a mix between a land animal like a crocodile and an aquatic one, with parts of its body resembling a fish or peacock's tail. What makes the Makara stand out though are the stories and the ancient carvings that have led to lots of speculation about what it could really be. One interesting place where the Makara appears is at Ta Prohum, a temple close to Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Here there's a small carving on a temple wall that seems to show something that looks a lot like a dinosaur. This has made people wonder if the people who built these temples might have known about dinosaurs from finding their bones or if the carving shows an animal they knew but that we don't know today. Some people think the carving might actually be that of a common animal like a cow or rhino but with some background details that make it look more like a dinosaur than it really is. Apart from these historical carvings though, there have been some claims and sightings in more recent times that bring the Makara back into conversation. For example, there was a controversial discovery in Vietnam in 2013 where a strange creature was found leading to lots of guesses about what it might really be. Some thought it could be related to the Makara or even a real life sea dragon or dinosaur. However, this find eventually turned out to be a hoax. Kaya Imunu In the dense jungles and coastal areas of Papua New Guinea, the Kaya Imunu is a cryptid often compared to the Therizinosaurus a dinosaur known for its towering height and distinctive long claws. The creature stands out for its unique physical characteristics, described as having a long neck similar to a sauropod, yet still stands on two legs and wields formidable front claws. The mystery of the Kaya Munu was brought into the spotlight by an article penned by Brian Irwin, an Australian who ventured into Papua New Guinea and collected first-hand accounts of the residents of West New Britain. According to her testimonies, the creature has made its presence known on Ambangi Island, among other locations, since the 1990s. The description of the Kaya Munu paints a picture of a beast of substantial size, 
Measuring 10 to 50 meters in length with a long tail, long neck, and a demeanor that suggests the creature not to be trifled with. Its skin is said to be smooth and shiny brown, evoking an image far removed from the typical fauna known to the region. Irwin's encounter with the young man named Robert on Umbagi Island provides a detailed account of a setting around 2005 or 2006. Robert described the creature as having a turtle-like head, a detail that contrasts a lot with the more horse-like head associated with there is no source. The creature's diet appears to be vegetarian too, as it was observed eating vegetation before retreating into the water. This setting, corroborated by others including Tony Avil, adds a layer of credibility to the existence of the Kaya Munu, suggesting it's not merely stuff of legend. Sightings of the Kaya Munu are sporadic though, with reports around Christmas time every 4-5 to five years, suggesting the creature might be nocturnal or elusive in nature. The few who have seen it though describe an animal that is as majestic as it is mysterious, capable of traversing both land and water with ease. Lao The Lao is a mysterious creature said to inhabit the dense, papyrus-filled swamps around central Sedan's lake. Descriptions of the Lao vary widely, but most accounts depict it as a massive, dinosaur-like creature, which draws some comparisons to the prehistoric Elasmosaurus. Reports suggest the Lao can grow from 12 to 100 feet in length, possessing a long, tapering neck and a body likened to a donkey with flippers. Its most distinctive feature, however, is a series of bristling, tentacle-like appendages that are poorly protrude from its muzzle, aiding in the capture of its prey. The Lao skin is described as having a yellowish-brown pigmentation, and despite the diversity in its reported appearances, ranging from a muscular and rounded form to an aquatic super snake with legs, most agree on its really formidable nature. The creature is often associated with the Lukwata of Lake Victoria, sharing a notorious appetite for human flesh and emitting a cry similar to the thundering of elephants. The first international spotlight on the Lao came in 1914, when a group allegedly killed a specimen in the swamps of Adar to use its bones for amulets though no scientific body has ever examined the corpse. More sightings followed in subsequent years, including a 12-foot Lao seen in Bahar al zaraf and various reports throughout the early 20th century of the creature's presence and the eerie sounds it produced. In 1924, a British petty officer named Stephens received a supposed sample of a Lao's vertebra. However, controversy arose when it was discovered that the bone provided was not actually from a Lao, but another animal kept as a coveted talesman by the local who had promised the specimen. The intrigue surrounding the law reached its peak in 1937 when a photo of a wooden effigy of a Lao's head used in native rituals was published. Carved by a hunter who had spent years in the Nao swamps, this effigy provided a tangible link to the legend, but still pretty mysterious. Vio The Vio is a cryptid believed to inhabit Rinka Island, Indonesia. It's described as a giant pangolin, comparable in size to a horse stretching up to 10 feet long. Unlike typical pangolins though, the veal boasts an extensive coat of bulletproof scales over its body, with fur on its head, throat, underbelly, inner legs, and tail. These creatures are known to spend their days hidden in the hills, emerging at night to forage along the coast, where their diet primarily consists of termites, ants, and occasionally stranded shellfish. They are recognized by their distinctive hoo-hoo-hoo -hoo call, often heard in the evening. One notable encounter involved a hunter from Rinja and a policeman who stumbled upon a veal near Loho Boaji. The encounter was tense with both men opting to lie still on the ground until the creature passed by, avoiding any confrontation. Despite some attributing veal sightings to other animals like dugongs or the Komodo dragon, locals are clear in their distinction. The veal's enormous size and unique features have led some cryptozoologists to speculate that it could be a surviving population of Manus pleojavancus, a large pangolin species that once lived in the region but is now considered extinct. Our right, onto tier 4 now, Masonic Hits. Masonic Hits, an interesting yet largely overlooked branch of the mammalian family tree, once roamed our ancient landscapes. Unlike the predominantly herbivorous ungulates that dominate our current ecosystem, Masonic Hits were fearsome predators. These creatures varied greatly in size though, ranging from small forms to those as large as horses. The physical characteristics of the Masonic Hids were quite distinctive too, featuring an evolutionary stage of hooves that was more primitive than those of modern ungulates. Their hooves appeared to be in a transitional state, 
not fully developed into the types we see today in creatures such as horses, deer, or cattle. For a long time, the prevailing narrative within the scientific community was that these hoofed predators faced extinction, with the exception of one lineage that ventured into aquatic environments, eventually giving rise to early whales such as the Basilosaurus. This narrative, however, has evolved. Recent discussions within the scientific community suggest that Masonic kids might not be the direct ancestors of today's cetaceans, but rather close relatives to the actual progenitors. This revised perspective is supported by findings that many early ungulates were omnivores or carnivorous, with the shift to herbivore occurring later in the evolutionary history. Cryptozoological records hint at the possibility that Masonic kids may have not completely vanished too. Reports from remote regions like South America describe creatures such as the Tapir Uara, which might suggest the existence of surviving Masonic populations. Similarly, the horned cats of the islands near Java could potentially belong to this group, considering the islands are often the hotspot for living fossils. Yet, yeah, it's the tale of the beast of Gevudan in Europe, a region least expected to hold such relics, that stirs the imagination with notions of a surviving hoofed predator. Yirmu The Yirmu, also known as Uku, is a group that reported from the Andaman Islands, a territory once under British Raj and now part of India. Described as a giant carnivorous creature, it's instilled a lot of fear across various tribes of the great Andamanese. This being is said to possess the capability to kill any living creature it encounters. Its presence is marked by a distinctive call that sounds like der. According to local beliefs widespread across the Andaman Islands, this animal lurks within the remote jungles. In the northern parts of Andaman, it's referred to as Jirmu, while the Upokewar language names it Uku. Tribal communities report that the Jirmu still remains among them. The introduction of elephants by the British in the late 19th and early 20th centuries led to some confusion among the Andamanese, who initially mistook these animals for the Jirmu due to their size. The notion of the Jirmu as a theropod dinosaur comes from interpretations that only such large carnivores could match the descriptions given by locals. However, this interpretation has sparked some debate. Some argue that the cryptid could have been a misunderstood setting of natural fauna, such as elephants, which the Andamanese identified as Jirmu, or even an unknown elephant-like animal. The comparison to theropod dinosaurs and specific references to dinosaur-like features in some depictions have been critiqued for lacking evidence and potentially misrepresenting the creature's true nature based on the available information. Kabuk the Kawuk is a cryptid reported to inhabit the dense jungles of Nusanakambangan Island, Indonesia. Described as a bipedal or reptilian creature, it's known for its hostility and aggression towards humans, distinguishing it from the native wildlife. The Kawuk's physical description aligns somewhat with that of a martial lizard, featuring four limbs and carnivorous habits. Unlike its known reptilian counterparts though, the, the Kawuk is said to possess the unique ability to stand upright and has been observed engaging in pack hunting mostly under the cover of night. This behavior has instilled a deep fear among the island's residents, leading them to avoid storing corpses or carcasses in their homes to prevent attracting these creatures. In notable encounter documented by Mirdaka News in 2014, a fisherman named Hiri and his companions witnessed a group of Kawuks tracking the body of their recently deceased friend. This event unfolded near the village of Solok Timur under the cover of night, necessitating the swift relocation of the body onto a ship to avoid any attack by the Kawuks. The urgency was heightened with the arrival of approximately 10 Kawuks, prompting the group to quickly move the corpse to safety. Such sightings are uncommon though, largely due to the limited presence of the media on the island and stringent controls over the movement of individuals by local authorities. The island, often referred to as the Indonesian Alcatraz, is an isolated and sparsely populated territory known for housing Indonesia's most secure prison. The island's dense jungles and limited electricity supply contribute to its mysterious and foreboding atmosphere, with the residents often relying on traditional machetes for protection against the wildlife. The Kauk's true nature though remains a subject of speculation. It could represent an undocumented species of martyr lizard, though existing species don't exhibit the same pack hunting behavior or bipedal stance attributed to the Kauk. Alternatively, it might be a surviving population of a non Coelosaur theropod dinosaur or a Herarosaur, suggesting a prehistoric relic. 
This theory, however, contrasts with the behavior of Komodo dragons, which share the island and are generally docile towards locals, who regard them as kin. Kor The Kor is a flying reptile reported from Manus Island, Papua New Guinea. Similar in descriptions to the Ropen of Umboy Island, located about 410 kilometers to the south, the Kor is known by its bioluminescent capabilities, displaying various colors. This cryptid is said to have a long tail and is covered entirely in skin, with some individuals reaching considerable sizes. The core is known to catch fish by skimming the ocean surface at night, using the light emitted from beneath its wings and belly to attract fish before swiftly capturing them in flight. There have been several accounts of encounters with the core, with one of the most notable reports coming from a local named RK. He shared that until the early 1940s, the core was a common and formidable threat to humans on Manus Island. According to RK, the arrival of Japanese soldiers during World War II led to aggressive encounters with the Corps, which were met with gunfire, wounding several of the creatures. The soldiers pursued the injured Corps to their cave dwellings and destroyed the entrances by detonating explosives. It was said that they further ensured the demise of the Corps by calling for native artillery to bombard the cave infested hills. Another encounter in the early 1960s involved a fisherman who was attacked by a Corps resulting in the destruction of his canoe. In a desperate defense, the fisherman used his traditional spear to fatally injure the creature as it pursued him to shore. Although he managed to kill the core, the fisherman succumbed to his injuries three days later. In more recent times, Arke observed mysterious lights moving above fish shoals in 2010, between Rambayuto and Lo Bolan Islands. He recounted seeing lights two years prior during a boating trip, where he heard wing flaps and witnessed the creature diving into the sea only to resurface moments later. The issue of the core remains speculative though. It's often considered a possible relic pterosaur similar to the Ropin and Solomon Islands dragon snake, showing similar traits like bioluminescent, leathery wings, and a distinct tail. Another hypothesis suggests that the core could be a dragon-like creature, although it lacks the fire-breathing capability noted in the dragon snake of the Solomon Islands. Ro. The roe, which was reported in the late 1930s in western New Guinea, Indonesia, presents a mysterious figure in the realm of cryptids. Described as a living dinosaur or a large reptile, its appearance and behavior have puzzled even a renowned cryptozoologist Bernard Huvelmans. The roe is seen as a humpback dinosaur about 40 feet long, featuring a long and slim neck and tail. Its head is small and beaked, resembling a turtle, complete with a bony frill and a sharp beak. The creature's front legs are shorter than its hind legs too, suggesting it could rear up. The rose body, covered in light brown yellow scales, camouflages it with the swampy habitats it's said to reside in. Notably, its back is covered with triangular plates, and its long tail ends in a heavy, granite spike, which, you know, really reminds you of a dinosaur. The existence of the roe came to light through the accounts of Charles Cannibal Miller and his wife Leona who encountered the creature during their honeymoon adventure in West New Guinea's jungles. They were living among the Kiriri, an undiscovered tribe, when they noticed the tribe using objects resembling elephant tusks, which are actually roe horns. The Kiriri eventually led the millers to the roe's habitat, a swampy river delta. The millers' sighting described the roe emerging from the reeds, its long neck rising and tail lashing out as it made noises. The creature even reared up several times, seemingly aware of their presence before disappearing into the surroundings. Despite this detailed account though, the story of the role, complete with Charles Miller's supposed film of the creature, remains shrouded in skepticism. No physical evidence such as the tail spikes or photographic documentation has been presented to the public, and the very existence of the Kiriri tribe and the specifics of the encounter are doubted by many. Further intrigue is added by similar reports from other explorers and locals in New Guinea, hinting at the presence of a neo-dinosaurian cryptid across the region. However, the combination of characteristics from disparate dinosaur lineages like exorpods, ceratopsians, and stegosaurs in the description of the role leads to speculation that the story may be a hoax or an embellished tale. Our Unsteer 5. Manta Bungal The Manta Bungal is a mysterious creature from the folklore of the Tagbunua people residing on the Palawan Island in Philippines. Known for its elusive nature, this cryptid is said to dwell in the dense forests surrounding the Victoria Peaks, a region covered in mystery and has stories of local mythology. Characterized by its massive build similar to that of a cow or an elephant, the Mansa Bungal 
possesses unique features that set it apart from known wildlife. It's described as having a long, shaggy coat of hair that cascades to the ground, hiding much of its frame. Unlike the typical predators of the wild, the Mantabungo's most distinguishing feature is its enormous mouth, equipped with two pairs of giant incisors, both on the upper and lower jaws, which is said to use with deadly efficiency to shred its unfortunate victims. Despite its herbivore's diet primarily consisting of fruits and fresh shoots, the Mantabungo exhibits a surprisingly aggressive demeanor towards humans and other intruders. It's known to trample and tear apart any perceived threat, leaving behind a trail of destruction for scavengers to feast upon. Their instinctual aversion to man-made structures is evident in their behavior, as they reported to demolish huts and other small buildings before turning their aggression toward living targets. The Mantabungo is most often encountered either roaming alone or in pairs, though they have been known to congregate near watering holes, reminiscent of elephant behavior. Sightings of the cryptid are rare too, with accounts often stemming from individuals venturing deep into its domain. One such account tells of a man who, upon hearing bovin-like moos during a stay in the mountains, found his campsite utterly destroyed by the Mantabungo, his belongings chewed to bits. The true nature of the Mantabungo though remains a subject of speculation. Some theorize it could represent a surviving relic population of prehistoric elephants such as Stegotetrabelodon or Agampothere, pointing to its similarity to these extinct giants. Others suggest it may be an entirely new species of large animal yet to be recognized by science. Xihao The Xihao, also known as the Rockwist Bird, is a mythical creature from Chinese folklore resembling a bird with notable distinctions that align it with characteristics of certain dinosaurs, such as the Microraptor or Changoraptor. These ancient dinosaurs, which inhabited China during the Cretaceous period, are believed to bear similarities to the Xihao's description, suggesting a possible link between myth and prehistoric reality. The Xihao is described to inhabit the remote areas around China's Bridge Channel Mountain, characterized by its unique anatomy of four wings and a tail resembling that of a dog. Also, it's noted for producing sounds similar to a magpie. Mythological descriptions of the Xiao sometimes include having a singular eye on its forehead, and is believed that consuming the Xiao could cure abdominal pain and diarrhea. Despite these descriptions though, there's no contemporary settings or substantial evidence to support the existence of the Xiao in modern times. The creature's description might hint at an undiscovered species of bird, or potentially a surviving relic of dinosaurs like the Microraptor. These dinosaurs are known for their four-wing structure and long, fluffy tails, which they might have used for gliding between trees in pursuit of prey, which closely mirrors the Xiao's described abilities. Stoa The Stoa, a lesser-known cryptid said to reside in the Amazonian rainforest of Brazil, mostly around the area known as Cerro do Curupira, emerged through accounts dating back to the early 20th century. The first notable report came from a 1920 encounter by Lord John and his military squad near a tribal village by a lake. During this incident, a group of large lizard-like creatures described as being the size of a buffalo and grayish in color reportedly leaped from a cliff and began attacking the natives with brutal force. The creatures were said to be immune to bullets and eventually succumbed to the effects of numerous poisoned arrows shot by the natives. These descriptions closely align with the physical attributes of the Carnotaurus, a large theropod dinosaur known to have inhabited South America around 75 million years ago. The region where these settings were reported remains largely untamed though, with a small number of native inhabitants living in seclusion. Interestingly, the effectiveness of the poison arrows over bullets in bringing down these creatures highlights the lethal potency of the toxins used by the natives, derived from the venom of colored frogs, capable of killing a human in less than 2 minutes. This detail lends a kind of interesting twist to the narrative, suggesting that traditional indigenous knowledge and weaponry might still hold formidable power against such formidable beasts, which makes you wonder if they're used specifically for creatures resembling prehistoric animals. Muhuru The Muhuru comes from the depths of Kenya's jungles. According to first-hand accounts, the creature is described as a behemoth, heavily armed with large, thick bony plates across his back, similar to a living fortress. This cryptid was first brought to public attention by missionary Cal Bombay and his wife, who relayed stories of their encounters with the Mohur. Since then, it sparked speculation about its possible connection to long extinct dinosaurs like the Stegosaurus, which was a plant-eating dinosaur from the late Jurassic period 
known for its distinctive roll bony plates along its back and spiked tail. However, the witness descriptions of the Muhru seem to align more closely with Ankylosaurus, another group of armored dinosaurs rather than Stegosaurus. Witnesses and locals describe the Muhru as having a demeanor that belies its herbivorous diet, with aggressive tendencies towards intruders in its territory. This behavior, along with its fearsome appearance, has cemented the Muhru's reputation as a creature to be both revered and feared. Amherst accounts provide a vivid picture of the Muhru's physical abilities and behavior. One account details a harrowing encounter with the beast, describing how it completely destroyed a campsite, leaving nothing but destruction in its wake. Such tales contribute to the growing lore surrounding the Muhuru and just add some layers to its mysterious existence. The possibility that the Muhuru could be a descendant of dinosaurs that has evolved over 150 million years to adapt new features, such as a club tail, presents an interesting hypothesis for scientists and cryptozoologists. This theory suggests that the passage of time could have witnessed the emergence of a subspecies with distinct characteristics from its ancient ancestors. Our until last tier now, tier 6. Black Demon The Black Demon Shark, known in Spanish as El Demonio Negro, is a mysterious and massive marine creature reported to dwell off the coast of Mexico's Baja California Peninsula. For years, local fishermen and residents have shared tales of sightings, adding to legend of this elusive oceanic cryptid. Descriptions of the Black Demon vary though, but it's consistently reported as an enormous shark, with estimates of its length ranging from 20 to 60 feet and weighing up to 100,000 pounds. Unlike any known shark species, the black demon is characterized by its strikingly dark coloration and a significant large tail, which distinguishes it from the familiar great white shark. First coming into spotlight around 2008, the black demon shark has sparked intrigue and speculation among cryptozoologists and marine biologists alike. There are several theories about the creature's true nature. Some suggest it could be a surviving megalodon, the prehistoric giant shark that is thought to have gone extinct millions of years ago. Others believe the black demon could represent a new, yet to be discovered species of shark, or perhaps an extraordinarily large specimen of the known great white shark. Despite the mystery surrounding the black demon, various expeditions and investigations have been launched in hopes of uncovering the truth. Notably, the creature was featured in an episode of Monster Quest, titled Mega Jaws, where researchers aim to gather evidence of its existence. However, these efforts have yet to produce conclusive results, and sighting the black demon remain rare, leaving much about this creature shrouded in mystery. Karaduku The Karaduku or Kara lizard is referred to by the great Andamanese, whose language lends the term duku for lizard. This cryptid has intrigued both locals and explorers in the Andaman archipelago. According to the indigenous people, this creature is a descendant of Marta lizards, notable for its formidable size and large teeth, which it purportedly uses to consume its prey. Descriptions of the Karaduku portray it as a massive lizard-like creature, invoking images of a creature far removed from the typical wildlife encountered in the region. The first notable attempt by outsiders to document the Karaduku came from British explorers in the early 20th century. Mr. Portman warned the explorers claimed that the natives had killed one of these creatures in the middle of Andaman and presented him with its bones. Despite its assertions, none of his contemporaries nor any other officers who had extensively explored the islands reported encountering such a creature. This skepticism was compounded by explorers' inability to align the descriptions of the Karaduku with any known animal in the area. Some speculated that the term might refer to sperm whales, known to the great Andamanese as Birigata, Yet this hypothesis did not fit the lizard-like descriptions offered by the locals and observed by Portman. Our until last entry, Sta. In Egyptian mythology, the Sta represents a fascinating amalgam of animal traits, described as possessing the head and neck of a highly venomous asp paired with the body of a large feline, although other quadrupedal forms have occasionally been substituted for the feline aspect. This creature, like many hybrid entities in ancient Egyptian lore, was revered as a deity, embodying the complex relationship between the natural world and the divine representation in Egyptian culture. Speculation about the Sta's real-world inspiration includes the possibility of it being based on ancient observations of large marta lizards. Some researchers proposed that it could have been an extinct species of leggy reptile that developed a more feline-like physique to better compete with Nile Basin predators. A minority of experts even entertained the idea that the Sta might have been a small sauropod, 
linking it to the dinosaur family known for their long necks and four-legged stance. Another interesting theory posits that the star could have been inspired by fossils of Basilosaurus, which was a long-necked prehistoric whale discovered in the Wadi al Hitan or Wadi of the Whales in Egypt. The presence of these ancient whale fossils in the region could have influenced local mythology, leading to the creation of hybrid creatures like the Sta in Egyptian lore. So that ends the video. I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to leave some feedback in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.